know I'm just going to hit an ace on this one, right? Oh, okay. Oh, that's going in the video. Hey there, fellow tennis junkies. Today we're going to be reviewing the Head Gravity Pro. All right, you guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and get into the ground stroke portion of the racket review. Um, this is one of the only 18 by 20 rackets I've ever melded with from the baseline. My problem with most 18 by 20s is that I struggle to get any spin at all, even though they always feel so solid from the baseline. I always struggle to get that little loop um, that I can typically get with the 16 by 19s. As you saw in the very beginning, the racket is incredibly thin. Um, the frame is super thin, um, which makes it incredibly flexy. So if you like a flexy feeling racket, a racket with a little bit of give, this gravity, um, the whole gravity line is gonna be a great option for you. I think for some people, they prefer that stiffer feeling, the, that pure strike feeling, um, like, a, like a pure drive, stiff racket feel and this is not stiff at all it has a great give to it so if you like a frame that's gonna flex whenever you kind of wail on the ball I think you're really gonna enjoy this one for me this was a whole new territory with the hundred head size I typically play with a 98 or lower head size I, pr I love the vCore 95 I like the vCore Pro 97 um, I like the Pro Staff 97 so I, I like those smaller head sizes I typically hit pretty hard so I'm, I'm almost constantly looking for a racket that's going to provide tons of control. So this Gravity Pro has never really been on my radar just because of the head size. But I, I talked to a couple people, I've been racket searching, I've been trying to decide what, what should I stick with, what should I use, um, and they kind of they recommended this one, even though it was an 18 by 20 which is not something that's typical for me. So from the baseline, I had great stability, okay spin. I'm going to talk about spin in just a little bit. I had pretty good stability. Um, Especially like, especially playing up against the the harder hitters. The harder hitters, sometimes I can get pushed around, um, and so having that stability, there's some added weight. I didn't add any weight. Excuse me. Having extra weight, um, the Gravity Pro is fairly heavy whenever it's strung. Um, you guys saw the spec sheet um, earlier in the video. So I I feel like this racket, I it, it works. It, it shockingly works specifically at the baseline. If you're a baseline player and you aren't a huge spin person, um, then I would definitely try out this frame, even if you're a little bit weary of 18 by 20 and if you're a little bit weary of the 100 head size, because it is, it is different. Okay, so let's talk about the spin. The spin is the biggest problem with this racket. 
but it's not really made for players who play with spin. This racket is truly made for players who hit pretty flat. If you look at players on the tour who are using this, or at least a close um, pro stock mold, is players like Andre Rublev. Um, if you guys know anything about Andre Rublev, he hits incredibly flat, and he just creates missiles with his um, with his forehands, and even his backhands are very flat. So this racket, if you if you aren't a spin only player, this racket is a really good option for you. I'm not saying you don't get any spin with it, but it is an 18 by 20. It is a pretty tight pattern, but since the head size is slightly larger, they're able to make it more open than say a Vcore Pro 97. For some people, um, the weight is going to be difficult to control. Um, it, is, it is a heavy frame, it is fairly balanced, so it's not super head heavy and it's not super handle heavy. Um, I did like that about this racket. My problem with some of the Technofiber rackets um, that are in this same sort of category, like the TF40 and the 18x20, is that they're really head heavy and to me, I can struggle to kind of whip around the ball if I need to hit something that's super low and trying to lift it up above my head. I, I sometimes struggle um, with the 1820 and a, and a heavy racket um, if it's head heavy, but at least this one is well balanced. Um, so it really helps still get the plow through, but it's still maneuverable, shockingly, even though it's heavy and it's the 100 head size. If this racket wasn't on your radar, it should be now. Um, if you like to hit flat, hard, and just grind from the baseline, this racket is going to reward you for big swings and for those super flat missile up the line backhands that people never expect. All right, so moving into volleys. This is a weird one. Um, this is definitely a weird racket for volleys. Um, it is the head, 100 head size, so it is not nearly as maneuverable as say a Pro Staff 97, or Pro 97, or the V4 95. Even it's not as maneuverable as any 98 square inch racket. If you're a main doubles player and you love playing the net in doubles, I would kind of second guess this choice just because it's, it's heavy, so it feels really, really stable. It feels really, really solid. I feel like I still got a great touch, but that the Hunter head size feels a little clunky, especially if you're not used to it. If you're coming from an oversized racket, say a 102, 104, a blade, 104, something along that line, I could totally see you being able to go down into the hundreds, into this 100 head size and feel comfortable. But for those of you who are already under um, the 100 head size, moving up, um, if you're gonna be playing a lot of the net, it's gonna be it's gonna be a difficult um, adjustment. It definitely took me some time to get used to it. In terms of touch, though, this racket was great since it has so much flex. You're kind of able to just move the ball wherever you want it. Um, it was so much fun, as you see in some of these clips. It was so much fun hitting some little drop shots, a little uh, little trick shot style backspin uh, volleys. It, this racket really is a blast at the net if you can handle the hundred head size, which it, it is. It feels clunky, that is definitely a downside to this racket um, if you're mainly a doubles player. All right, let's get into the one shot you can actually control in tennis, the serve. Serving with the Gravity Pro is awesome. Um, hitting those flat bombs, as you see in these clips, feels great. I, I absolutely love hitting the massive flat 120 serves with this racket. It is very point and shoot. Um, with that 1820 tight pattern, it is a very point and shoot frame. Um, which is super nice. It, it definitely um, rewards you if you can hit your spots, um, if you can if you can aim well um, when serving. The downside, though, again, comes back to the spin. If you can't hit flat serves, if you're not a big server, you're going to struggle to get some power. You're going to struggle to get some spin um, on this serve. Uh, yeah, on the serve with this racket. Um, you definitely are going to need to go down in tension um, to help out with the spin. That's what I did. I'm actually going to make a video on uh, some discoveries that I've made with tension later, so make sure you guys keep an eye out for that. But things like slice serves, um, like going out wide, I'm left-handed, so going out wide on the ad side for me, it, it felt a little weird and it definitely took some getting used to. It's not nearly as extreme as something like an E-Zone, um, which I've been using previously, um, or something like a, like a V-Core 
98 if you call 100. It's not an open pattern at all, so it's definitely a difficult thing to try and grip the ball um, for as long as you're probably used to. It just doesn't, it does not create its own spin. That's the best way I could probably put the spin on this racket. To the most overlooked shot in tennis, the returns. Uh, returns with this frame felt great due to the weight, due to the stability, due to the flex, um, due to the 18 by 20. You can redirect any ball. You're not getting pushed around. It's so stable. You are not getting pushed around in any way. Um, and then if you really want to just laser back a return, it works um, because that 18 by 20 just helps keep. A, it takes all that spin off the ball and just creates an absolute missile. Um, if you're getting pushed around with returns, um, if you're struggling a lot to kind of get your racket around the ball, um, this racket is going to be great for you um, to kind of help improve that. And I really saw improvement in my returns with this frame. I, I will say it is slightly heavy, so people who can't really handle the weight, you could try out the Gravity Tour, which is an 18 by 20 as well. It's just lighter. But you definitely need to keep the keep the weight in mind if you like to swing big on your returns. If you're someone who likes to chip and charge, someone who likes to block um, returns, hit slices on returns, um, just kind of redirect the ball and add in a little bit more of your pace. It, this is really, really a nice frame for returns. All right, so I kind of just want to summarize everything I've been talking about. I'm going to have some point play just playing over my uh, audio here. But um, main things, um, positives of this racket is going to be the stability, um, especially due to the added weight. It's going to be the 100 inch head size because you get such a big sweet spot, especially with this gravity line, how it's elongated, um, not elongated, but it's it's made to be kind of like a Yonex um, near the tip of the head. And then, um, the 18 by 20 pattern I'm going to put in the pros and the cons list. The pros because it's such a point and shoot racket. And then the last pro that I have is how flexy the frame feels. I love the flexy feeling. If you like stiff rackets, this is not the one for you, but I love the flexy feeling. It allows me to get so much touch on the ball. All right, for the cons, number one is definitely gonna be the spin. The spin is definitely your biggest issue. Um, if you're a spin player, this is not the racket for you. You can produce a good amount of spin because of the bigger head size, um, so the pattern isn't too tight for an 18 by 20, but if you're used to the 16 by 19, I would give this one a shot, but just be aware that you're it's, you're gonna have to work to get that out of loop um, and that big dip on your forehands and backhands, and especially on your surface. Um, another con could be the weight. This is a tentative con, um, just because the weight is gonna be dependent on the player. Um, it's whatever you personally can handle. Um, um, and the last con is gonna be the maneuverability, especially at the net. Since it is a bigger head size, I uh, did struggle, like I said earlier, with um, some, some of my net play, just because it's just a little bit clunky at the net. But if you like to play more singles, if you like to play more baseline stuff, then this is definitely one that you should check out.
All right, so that's gonna be it for this review. I wanna thank you guys for watching the Head Gravity Pro review, and hopefully this was helpful in helping you guys decide if this 18 by 20 uh, beast of a racket is gonna be able to work out for, for you baseline aggressive players out there. If you guys could go ahead and hit the subscribe button, like button, all that sort of stuff, it really helps me out, helps grow the channel, and get the video out there more. And um, yeah, make sure you drop down below in the comments if there's a string, a racket, something like that you wanna see me review. I'll try my best to get my hands on it and uh, yeah, I have tons of string reviews lined up. Uh, I have Head Links Tour. I have Vocal Cyclone. I have Signum uh, Pro Firestorm, what uh, Matteo Berrettini uses. So make sure you put on those notifications so you can see whenever I make those, those next videos. See you guys in the next one.